During the opening credits of our story, which takes place in the Victorian era, a man stands with a woman to have their picture taken. In the picture, a young boy appears, showing that he has a ghost-like presence. Then another man has his picture taken to show something similar happening. A person in a white cloak appears behind him in his picture. We see more of the same take place before our story begins. A curtain opens to show us three people standing on stage, having finished performing in a play. An elderly woman stands nearby to call one of the performers over to her. The lady she calls to her is Angelica, who is told that her mom wants to see her. Upon arriving home, a maid there tells Angelica that she has never seen her mother in such a state. As Angelica climbs the stairs, the elderly lady says that her mom has become more troubled since she last saw her. The young lady comes to see her mom in the bedroom. Her mother, Constance, tells her daughter the awful statement that she is coming closer to her demise. Angelica, however, thinks this to be nonsense. She assures her mom she is still young and healthy. Once Angelica approaches her, Constance takes her hand to tell her something about her father. She wants her daughter to understand he did not abandon them. That is when she starts telling the story about her past with him, beginning with the point at which they first met. We see a man enter a building, Joseph Barton. There we see a younger Constance working. Joseph sees her soon after we do, greeting her as the new girl, welcoming the young lady. We see he has taken an instant liking to her. In the next scene, we observe they are already walking alone together outside. They talk about evolution because the subject was still fresh at the time. Joseph is a believer in the theory, which must have been quite unusual at that time. The couple then arrives at a miniature circus. It features several unusual individuals. One of them, the tattooed man, is said to be a husband to 50 wives. He looks lustfully at Constance, wanting her to perhaps join their ranks. This angers Joseph, who dishes out his disapproval toward the circus man. After that, the couple looks at the pictures we saw at the start of the film. Constance mentions how scary they are, but Joseph thinks it's foolish to believe in such things. His answer confuses her, because the pictures surely show what has to be taking place. She asks if he could believe what he sees with his eyes. The man answers that he believes what he sees in her, which is her beauty and noble simplicity. Afterward, Constance starts talking about being a mother. It's like being sentenced to wait for something horrible to happen to your child. Her mother had to experience her children losing their lives. The next scene shows us about a dozen microbes. Joseph tells her they are her enemies, as she looks at them through a microscope. They are the ones that steal lives. We get to see one of them reproduce. Constance wonders how doctors are ever expected to catch such tiny devil. They cannot be caught, he says. One can only deny them the conditions that keep them growing. That prompts her to wonder if he could discover an end to all sickness. It's possible, he tells her. Hearing this makes her wonder if they all could stay alive forever. At this point, Joseph holds her hand to tell her she has no protector. He asks if she would of him as such. She places her other hand on his in response, asking if he would show her his workplace. He thinks that a laboratory is no place for a woman, but maybe someday he will. Back at her job, Constance mostly asks herself if Joseph will be her life's adventure. Her coworker comments on it, yet she ignores it, repeating the line because she likes the image it sparks in her mind. Following this, we see her standing on a lavish balcony. Coming to Joseph, he tells her how lovely she is, as he reaches his hand outward to the lady. She comes into bed with him and the couple engage in intimacy. At another time, they ride in a carriage. Constance wears a fancy red gown. It is their new place of living. As time goes by, we see how they enjoy being with each other. Soon, she tells Joseph he will make life safe for their children. That is their one aim, he says. Later, Constance comes outside, where she is met by two ladies she knows. She informs them she is married to Joseph now. Having had smiling faces before, the ladies turn those smiles to frowns. They soon walk away. We wonder what the problem could be. This upsets our protagonist to some extent. Inside their home, Joseph asks his wife if she knows why he married her. For love, she says, like in the fairy stories. He repeats her answer in agreement. A drastic change takes place when we see Constance in labor. After her arduous struggle, the baby is finally birthed. The doctor informs her she is lucky to be alive, along with her child. He strongly advises that she does not risk giving birth again, privately. The doctor tells Joseph to find pleasure in other places. He is an objectionable man to advise such cheating on Joseph's wife. We then see how depressed Constance is at home, as her baby is being tended to by a nurse. Joseph wants her to know it's not her fault. A few years have passed since the baby was born. Angelica sleeps near the couple's bed. After Joseph has finished engaging in intimacy with Constance, he apologizes for the act. The next scene has the lady in pain outside, because her husband touched her like that. Back at home, a doctor asks her if she wishes her daughter to be motherless. The doctor from earlier is also there, saying he told her to abstain from such activities at Angelica's birth. The other one adds that she pursues her desire at her family's expense. At this moment, we should be furious, because we know it's not her fault what happened, Joseph was the instigator. Yet these two seem to only be interested in lecturing the poor lady. She mentions her husband, which makes the doctor from years ago state that he will talk to him. Once Joseph enters, the main doctor says Constance will live by the grace of God. After that, we see Constance with Angelica. She yells at the girl because she takes her father's knife in her hands like a toy. Joseph was awarded that knife for his courage. At a bar, Joseph sits drinking with his friend. Wearing a sad expression, his friend notices it. 
He learns it's because Joseph's wife shuns him. He asks how often Joseph sees other females. Joseph is honorable in this regard, saying he doesn't do that, and neither should his friend. However, the man thinks that if Joseph cannot get satisfaction from his wife, he is allowed to sometimes indulge himself. When Joseph replies that it's an undignified pursuit of fleeting pleasure, his friend asks if he knows of other kinds. Back at home, we see how upset Joseph is. He demands that Angelica stays in her room tonight, as he swiftly undoes the bedcover from his wife and daughter. Constance stays with her daughter in her room to read her a bedtime story. After leaving her room, she is upset to leave Angelica alone there. Then she sits combing her hair in front of a mirror in the main bedroom. Her husband looks at her, waiting for her to come to bed, but she never does. In the morning, she wakes up on a chair in Angelica's room. Joseph mentions it during breakfast. Constance tells him that their daughter cried out to her. The man tries to teach her that if she does not come to her, Angelica will learn to comfort herself. At another time, Joseph comes home with a monkey. Angelica loves it right away, thinking it's a funny animal. Joseph tells Constance he got it from a colleague. We wonder where the monkey truly came from. Since Joseph works in the field of medicine, we can only imagine what the monkey could be for. At night, Constance lies in bed with Joseph. He says they have been torn apart by Angelica. It is no way for them to live. He wants to engage in intimacy with her again. His wife tells him they can't. She even tells him to seek such satisfaction elsewhere. But her husband disagrees with that. He finds another way for them to engage in the act safely. During the act, however, Constance hears Angelica coughing constantly, so she rushes to her. Later, Constance cuts her finger with the special knife. It prompts her to check Angelica's hand to see if it's okay. They then talk about the girl's father for a short time. Constance tells her his job is to care for and protect them. Also, he must cure diseases. This gives her the idea of one day visiting his lap. On another day, the lady sets out to do exactly that. She goes to his location, retrieving information from several people about where his lab is. Soon enough, she arrives at a door. A man exits and informs her that visitors are usually not permitted inside. She's Joseph's wife, though. She could go in if she desires to. Constance curiously walks inside, while witnessing over a dozen people in the room. Some of them look at her strangely as she slowly walks toward Joseph. He turns around to see her smiling at him. The man does not seem too happy to see her there, but she tells him it's a surprise. Her smile disappears once she sees many different animals kept in cages. The monkey that he brought home is among them. However, the situation does not become serious until she observes a similar monkey being operated on appallingly. Perhaps it could even be the one that was brought home. It has the top of its skull removed, with its brain exposed. This sight repulses Constance, who doesn't understand what it's for. She also sees other similar atrocities and feels more pain. Running away, she gets caught by Joseph. He says they're not suffering, because they're not capable of it. Those words are nonsense to his wife. He mentions Angelica, which makes her tell him not to utter her name in that room. We see how disheartened Constance is when she walks around the town. At night, they lie in bed together. Our heroine can't sleep, due to still being heavily affected by what was revealed to her. She comes to her sleeping daughter. In a few seconds, she shakes her to wake her up, believing the girl wasn't breathing. Back in bed with Joseph, Constance hears a scream. This causes her to get up, to check on Angelica again. The girl is sound asleep, yet Constance perceives something bizarre near her. Floating above her are the microbes we saw earlier. Of course, for them to be visible, they are more than a hundred times larger. Suddenly, the door shuts behind her and the huge microbes vanish into the cabinet. She goes to check it, only to find nothing there. All she finds is some slime. It disgusts her, making the lady run to Joseph. She brings him into the room to describe what she experienced. But the situation makes it difficult for her. Nothing is there anymore. She is made to look like a lunatic in her husband's eyes. During breakfast, Angelica tells her dad there was a visitor last night in her room. Those words bring a look of worry to her parents. Those looks disappear, though, when their daughter says that the visitor was her mom. Joseph says she visits because she's worried about Angelica. The girl gives an interesting reply for a child. She says it's right for mom to worry, because that's what mothers do. Then we see Constance playing the piano. Joseph sits watching her, with a look of unease. He's probably thinking about what she told him last night. The next scene has Constance sitting in Angelica's room at night. She observes how the cabinet opens, to have the giant microbes fly out toward the sleeping girl. She stands nearby, to see even more of them than before. Touching them causes the ghostly things to start coming together to form an entity hovering face down. Constance holds a lit lantern to it, to have the being break apart before retreating into the cabinet. Because of this, she stays in the room all night to protect her daughter. It delights the young girl to see her mom there with her. Soon enough, she asks something quite unsettling, if her mom saw the flying man. The mother kneels to her, saying she thinks she did. She wants to know if he ever hurt her. It didn't happen, and Constance says it never will, because Angelica will always be protected. Later, Constance gets into an argument with Joseph, due to the paranormal happening. When asked if nothing feels out of balance to him, his only reply is that he thinks she won't value his words or his tone. She says Angelica saw it too, so she can't be mad. To Joseph, it still sounds like she confirmed the girl's infantile fantasy. Constance cries on the couch afterward. The maid, Nora, comes to her. She asks if there's anything she can do. Constance tells her about the paranormal activity. 
it seems like she told it to the right person, because Nora knows a woman who understands such phenomena. This is great news for Constance, who tells the maid she's in desperate need of such help. After that, we see a more chaotic household. Nora sits there, talking to the woman she spoke of. She tells her what her mistress told her. In that environment, we notice she presents herself more unpleasantly. We even learn she's possibly only doing this because she gets 20% for the referral. It's likely the woman did not act out of care, but rather out of financial gain. As the family eats dinner, Joseph hopes Nora will be healed by breakfast time. Supposedly, something happened to the lady, which we did not see. On the next day, Nora arrives with Anne, the woman which she recommended to Constance, and makes it known that she likes Constance right away. She wants the lady of the house to take her hand, to lead her inside. Anne asks if her husband is a veterinarian, but Constance gets somewhat uncomfortable because of what she remembers in the lab. At that point, Anne realizes he's a vivisectionist. Constance feels the need to place Joseph in a better light, telling her guest he has arguments to defend his actions. Anne wants the lady to understand that she has heard many horrors while helping many different ladies such as our heroine. She cannot be shocked. Constance informs her that Joseph seems to have somehow snapped. His desires have become odd. Cracks have also permeated the house to represent this. She shows some of them to Anne. Learning this, Anne walks around the house, swinging a bell as a way to deal with the evil that has taken hold of the house. She also places some small branches in the cabinet, where the evil is most concentrated. Constance says she tried to please Joseph. She noticed that Angelica suffers the moment she is submissive to her husband. Constance starts crying, which moves Anne to comfort her. She promises to make things right. While she's leaving, Anne speaks to Nora. She tells the maid that Constance is nothing like she said she is. On top of that, Nora should consider herself lucky to be working for such a fine lady. Before leaving, Anne advises Constance to have faith in her innocence. On another day, Constance introduces her daughter to Anne. But the girl is shy, so she runs away. Constance gives the great news that last night passed without any trouble. This information relieves Anne. As they keep talking, eventually Angelica runs to them to say she saw the strange being again. Her mother thinks she is lying. She seems to have placed too much faith in Anne's procedure, too much and too fast. Afterward, the girl speaks her first words to the new lady, asking if she will protect them. From the looks of it, Anne genuinely assures her that she will. At home, Joseph finds his wife sleeping on the floor in Angelica's room. He tells her that he's going somewhere overnight. What's weird is that he calls her by her last name, like she's a stranger to him. While the man is out of the house, Constance invites Anne for dinner. The guest expresses delight with the food she has served. That's because Constance wants to treat her like a friend. They also unwind by drinking some wine. As they climb the stairs, Anne informs her friend that evil could be projected without will or knowledge. The evil that lurks deep within someone might have a way of coming out. Since Anne is there, along with Joseph being absent, and makes sure Constance gets her much-needed sleep in her bed. On the next day, Constance sees her husband return home. She calls out to him, yet he oddly just keeps walking. At that moment, she hears a scream and Angelica's door rattles. We can only reason that Joseph ignoring her has caused it. When Constance enters the room, she sees the microbes flying around again. This prompts her to get on her daughter's bed, where she spills the liquid from her lantern on the floor. She then tosses the lantern to create a semicircle of fire surrounding the bed. She completes the ritual by holding out her cross at the microbes while frantically saying a prayer. It works, for they retreat into the cabinet. Replacing their presence is Joseph, who anxiously rescues Angelica from the fire that surrounds her bed. The scene fades away as he tries to rescue Constance next. Later, Joseph talks to a doctor, who tells him he has allowed the crisis with his wife to go beyond reasonable bounds, although he also says that her hallucinations are not that rare for women of her class. He believes Constance is determined to let herself go. In doing so, she has exposed them to a grave infection. Furthermore, the doctor thinks they are past the point of easy treatment. After that, we see the new rules that Joseph has imposed once Constance tries to leave her home. Nora will not allow her to exit. She even tries to go through, but the maid physically prevents it. At night, Nora comes to deliver a drink to the lady of the house, only to be called a wretch. She spills the delivered drink in the fireplace. During Angelica's bedtime hour, Constance enters the room to watch over her. Shortly after, the paranormal being comes out to press her against the wall. Then it comes to the sleeping girl. Yet Constance diverts it back to herself. It forms a snake that seems to violate our heroine. Afterward, she runs away with her daughter to enter Nora's room. She demands to know where Anne lives. Nora can't deny her the information given the latter's state of panic. The next scene has Constance with Angelica at Anne's place. The lady continues to panic, telling Anne that the entity keeps coming for her daughter non-stop. She cries, saying they should stay together in Anne's home. There, they will be safe. All Anne can do is comfort her. At night, Anne awakens her friend to tell her she has to go back home because there's a carriage waiting outside. Disappointed with this news, Constance anxiously says she can't return there. However, Anne ends up convincing her to return, because Joseph might think she fled. That could make him take Angelica for himself and send Constance away to a hospital. The troubled lady's last words to Anne before leaving are that she will make her proud. Back at her home, Constance comes to meet her daughter in a fancy round gown. 
Angelica runs to hug her mother with joy. Then Joseph enters, with the man we saw him with earlier. He calls him Dr. Miles. Constance treats their guest graciously with some tea. He returns the favor by complimenting her sense of decoration that exists throughout their home. We notice that Joseph acts very strangely, as he tells his wife to make Miles comfortable. He soon leaves in somewhat of a hurry, like he's expecting something unpleasant to occur with Constant. Alone with her now, the invited doctor starts asking her questions, and he assures her that her answers will remain discreet. While answering them, one after the other, we see that Constance tries telling him what he might want to hear. More importantly, she gives such answers that make her look sane. Soon, though, she walks to the window to see something that adds fuel to her anxiety. Outside is a carriage, with official personnel standing near it. This doesn't look good, because it seems to indicate Constance could become committed at the doctor's request. The man joins her near the window, where he gives her a concealed and polite threat that she could be taken away to become refreshed. After being frightened, she turns to him, explaining that she cannot accept such an offering, when her husband has withstood sufferings that she hasn't. This is another response that shows evidence of her sanity. All Miles can do now is speak to Angelica. So that is what we see next. He's about to give Angelica some licorice. But first, he asks how her bedroom caught fire. Speaking with surprising eloquence for such a young girl, she says confessions are made promptly after someone has an accident. Her mother tripped, she adds. That's how the room was set ablaze. Constance is relieved to hear what her daughter says. She gets her licorice for her answer. With such exchanges from mother and daughter, Miles leaves their home with a positive conception of them. Constance has played her part very well, protecting herself and Angelica. When her daughter sleeps, Constance is there to place her cross on the girl. She assures her she will restore her father. Following this, she lies seductively in the main bedroom. This causes the entity made from microbes to start coming to her. He starts engaging in intimacy with our heroine. Joseph then appears, but she does not see him. After looking at his wife in such a state, there is nothing he can do except approach her, just like the ghost. As he engages in the act with her, she uses his knife to stab him. Unbeknownst to her, she has brought her husband to his demise. Grief now consumes her. With this vital event, we are brought back to where our story began, back to the adult Angelica, hearing the end of her mother's story. She walks away, saddened by it, and comes to comfort the poor lady, who just learned the truth at this age in her life. At that moment, Angelica remembers the fire, in addition to the licorice. As Nora and Anne carry Constance from her bed, we similarly witness how they took Joseph away many years earlier. Angelica was there to see it. She now remembers seeing how her father was dragged away. After all those years, the young lady watches how Anne still takes care of her mom, along with Nora. The final moment shows us a picture of the young Constance with her daughter. The spirit of Joseph appears there with them. Perhaps now that the story has been told, the man has rejoined his family.